Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Are you dressed in black? I hope you are, because we are about to have a funeral. I heard a death came and knocking on my mama's door, saying, come on, mama, are you ready to go? And my mama scooped down, buckled up her shoes, and went on down to the Jordan stream. Have you heard that one? Death came and knocking. I love that song. I love that song. And it's going to be the funeral song for a couple of politicians today. So let's see. Can you guess? Can you guess? I bet you already know who they are. I bet you already know who they are. <sighs> Shall we just do it? Let's go ahead and do it. So <clears throat> we have some problems here because two of them are some good old boys that we know and we love and we thought they were tight at the hip, didn't we? We thought they were two good, good independent old boys that worked for the freedom of the USA. They didn't belong to the GOP and they didn't belong to the Democrats and they were out there in Mark Meadows fighting the good fight except that every time it came to a big Trump decision, they kind of sunk things, didn't they? They didn't just sink it. Every time it came to immigration, boom, they sunk it. Isn't that kind of weird how the work of the budget, boom, they sunk it. Isn't it weird how that kept happening? And then all of a sudden, when it came to leadership, it was like, hey, they're going to be the leaders. And Lou Dobbs, somehow Lou Dobbs of Fox Network is saying, hey, they should lead us out of nowhere. I wonder why that would be, especially considering Fox is owned by Disney. Disney is owned by Michael Eisner, one of the biggest leftists on the planet. And Michael Eisner is owned by, you know, the top dogs, Big Six, the Big Six, all the 90% of the media in the entire world. You know, it didn't really make sense, did it? Kind of have to wonder about these things. Hmm, how does this all work? You know, Tucker, he's got a great contract because he'd been fired a bunch of times, so he knew how to have a good contract. So that's why his content is so different. His writers are great, everything like that. That's why he can go out there with all that weird stuff. But the rest of them, man, they get screwed into all these contracts. That's why their radio shows sound so freaking different. So anyway, let's get on to it, shall we? Let's get on to the votes. This is what you're here for. This is why you came. Let's get on to the funeral. All right, so first up, they didn't have as many votes on there. I don't know why, but I do have some more information on you for you about the, what the votes actually say this time around. So let's get on to the key votes as it stands about the yeses and the noes. Let's take a look. So we finally found somebody who actually voted like we think a GOP person is supposed to vote, right? Ta-da! da 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 Trey Gowdy! Woo! Look at all those beautiful yeses. Now, do you think Trey Gowdy actually believed in all of those bills? Do you think Trey Gowdy was like, absolutely, I believe in every single line? No, you and I both know Trey Gowdy well enough by now. And if you don't know who Trey Gowdy is, you really need to get online because he has some of the most entertaining videos there are. He actually does his job in Congress. It reminds you of Mr. Smith goes to Washington. He like actually gets in there and I cannot believe he's leaving. It just broke my heart into a million pieces. When I found out he was really going, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I hope he's going on to greener pastures. So we need more people like him in Congress. And that is what we we're doing with clean GOP is getting more people like him in. If the GOP will actually let anybody in, they're suing everybody that comes in to contend. Be ready for that, people. Like they are suing everybody off the planet. So make sure you have all your I's and T's dotted. When you fill out all your application, your your paperwork, just make sure you have everything lined up before you apply because the GOP will come in and knock you out just for, like, you can't fudge anything when you go on in. The GOP will just, like, try and knock you out for any little thing. And it's, they're so non-democratic these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very DNC. So anyway, so um, they just want you out of the race. So you just need to make sure you fill out your paperwork right. So anyway, uh, you may want to take Hillary's course on how to become an actual candidate. So she has, entire uh, she has an entire course on how to do it. So anyway, here are all of his votes. He voted yes on everything. And the reason he did that is because he knows it's what the people wanted. He knows two things. One, you follow your president. And number two, it's because it's what his people wanted. He knows that he's there representing the people. He is not there representing his own personal views. He's there representing the people's views. And he knows it's what the people want. And so he votes as the people want. That's his job. So he's representing the people. And he voted as they wanted, just like we all thought they were doing. So thank you, Trey Gowdy, for actually doing your job. Thank you. Kind of like we thought they would vote. You know, some of them may not be perfect, but what was interesting is when it came to the, like, vote meter or whatever, which doesn't have everything and stuff like that, 
He was the one person that I've ever seen where it said, this is what we estimated, what we thought he would vote with Trump on because of what he said he agreed with Trump on. And he's the one guy that actually voted above. All of the politicians are voting below. They all stated their positions were this. And all of and they say they all said so we thought they would vote with Trump this much, like ninety one percent or ninety nine percent because of their stated positions, and they're all falling below it. Not Trey Gowdy, he's above it. They're like he's exceeding the prediction. I'm like, right, yeah. So because he's voting with the people, that's Trey Gowdy for you. But now we move on to Jim Jordan. And that's when we get once again like the unfortunate politician thing where we're like is he GOP or is he DNC what is it because he voted exact like this is a GOP person and this is a Democrat and he looks like a Dem and it's on the same stupid bill too he gutted the farm bill he worked with the DNC to gut the freaking farm bill and he's from Ohio he gutted the farm bill I couldn't believe it I was just like you gutted it like, why would you gut the farm bill? Like, it's a major issue. What the heck's wrong with you? And then he comes in here, and then he votes only one yes more. Only one yes vote more on the economy. And you know what this is? The economy? These are economy and regulations. That's all the UN 21 stuff. That's literally all UN 21 stuff. That's all Agenda 21. It's all the World Socialism stuff. This is why on both the Senator stuff with, Nance, uh, with Senator Feinstein and on this stuff, that's why it looks so similar. Because this is all the Agenda 21 stuff. This is why they're voting so similar. And then here's when they get into, what is this right here? Domestic. And what I've noticed with domestic, they're always so different because this is when it has to do with things like values, like abortion and stuff like this. There's no way either of them are going to fudge on anything. It doesn't have to do with our government making a democracy into socialism or anything. It totally has to do with hot button issues like abortion, partial birth abortion and stuff like that. I mean, it's not anything that it's like literally, but it doesn't change our government at all. It's all like, you know, um, uh, what should we say? Value stuff that literally changes administration. Administration goes back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. It doesn't have to do with how our government is structured at all. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't have to do with, the, like, how our government is actually, like, ballooning our budget. It doesn't have to do with our budget. Like, here's what really ticks me off, is that he voted against our budget. Kim Strassel did an actual, she did an actual speech where she talked about, can you drain the swamp? And she did this like long speech, this hour long speech where she talked about, does this swamp exist? And she outlines the swamp where these veterans, like these veterans, like these hundred year old veterans are like crying in the aisles. They're just crying because they had loved ones. They had brothers in combat die for this country only to have the Obama administration just destroy it with corruption so completely in just eight years, right? And then at the end, somebody asks the question, says, how can, can it even come back? Can we come back from any of this corruption? And she literally says the answer, well, actually, actually, uh, most of this can be cleaned up if we just passed pass Trump's budget bill. And the whole room was just like, what? And Jim Jordan knows that. He knows all the corruption and he voted against it. Not Trey Gowdy, Jim Jordan. And that's why they want him leading because he will keep world socialism intact and keep them on track so that when, uh, whatchamacallit, when um, Donald Trump is out of office, boom, it goes back to Obama's government. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I, if, if you look at it, like I was looking at the things that he supported, at least 15 issues he told you that he supported or opposed things one way, and he voted at least 15 times the opposite way. He literally straight out lied to you on major, major issues 15 times. Like he told you he'd vote for the budget bill, and then he didn't. Or he'd vote for the immigration or he, and then he didn't. Or that he'd vote for, oh, like here's a big one. He said that he would vote, 
Like he said that he would vote for the like crime prevention in schools, like for, you know, gun prevention safety for like, uh, whatchamacallit, metal detectors in the schools. He voted against that bill. That's like what the gun lobbyists want. That's what the DNC has been doing. The DNC has gutted those school safety bills so that kids can continue dying in schools and bleeding so that they have a reason to take away our gun rights. They want to disarm every citizen. They want us to keep dying so that they have a reason to pass another gun restriction law. They want to it. They want illegal guns out there and everything like that. If schools are actually safe, if you have metal detectors in the schools, then kids don't die and they have no reason to lock us down with another school raid and another reason to have a campaign. But he voted against that bill. He voted against a school safety bill. I just was like, that's what Democrats do. I've never seen anything like it. He voted against a bill that said that if you attack law enforcement, like actually go and attack a law enforcement officer, it's a federal crime. And I'm like, so wait a minute, if you smoke pot, it's a federal crime, but not if you attack a law enforcement officer. How often do they go after law enforcement officers and attack them? But oh no, oh no, like how much like we literally have entire mobs promoting that kind of violence. And Jim Jordan's like, oh no, he says he supports it, but no, he votes against it. Like, once again, another liar, and I'm sorry, I know I called Rand Paul a liar, but now you have a Bible-thumping, Bible-preaching, praise the Lord, Jesus-praising, Jesus-con artist guy telling you that he is an honest-to-God, honest-to-goodness, no, 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 aw shucks, aw shucks. Yep, Democrat on your hand. Praise Jesus. Way to go. Check the votes already. Check the votes if they're a GOP or not. You need to get in people who actually do it. And that means you don't want someone who's nice. You don't want someone who has false humility. You don't want someone who's big and bold and too big, not big and bold, sorry. You don't want someone who's like, uh, whatchamacallit, um, narcissistic, who's like got a bigger head than they actually have, like who says they're more than they are. There are people, you see it on American Idol all the time. They think they're bigger than they are. They think they deserve it when they didn't earn it. You see it all the time. People who believe they should be a star when they don't have the talent and they haven't earned it. They absolutely believe it. So they have no chops. They haven't done the work. They haven't earned it. And they're just like, give it to me. So there are people like that. There are car salesmen who are like that. They're big and blah, 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 blah. And they sell it that way by being really, really big. They puff it like puffer fish. That's what I mean by big and bloated. Like the puffer fish. And that is how they get the sales done. By appearing bigger than they are. And then there are people who get the job by appearing smaller than they are. They appear smaller and diminutive. So you say you give them a compliment. Say you, they did a good job and they're like, actually, it was somebody else who did it. Or you say, oh, I really like what you did over there. And you'd be like, no, 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 I don't. Think it. No, 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 please don't do it. Please don't do it. No, 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 Or, you know, were you always going to be a politician? No, no, no. I was just an accident. I just happened to enroll in the class. I actually heard it, you know, absolutely take no praise at all. Always shove it off so that you feel like you can absolutely never criticize them. It's an amazing tactic, but they are both sales tactics. It is okay to vote for somebody who just tells it straight. That's humility. Humility. Look it up. Humility is saying that you are no greater than you are and no less than you are. Humility is stating exactly as you are. And when you're looking for candidates, you should be looking for a person who says they are exactly as they are. No greater and no less. They should be saying exactly as they are. They shouldn't be trying to snow you. They shouldn't be trying to play you. They should be right where they are. Right here. That's humility. They should be honest about their achievements. They should be able to say thank you when they compliment them. They should be able to take it. They should be able to handle it. If they can't, they've got something wrong. There's a weakness there. There's something wrong and there's something you can't trust. And you have to learn that lesson. If you're going to trust them with your vote in a Congress that's under attack, the very core, our very democracy, we're the only one in the world that has a democracy from the local, state, and national government. And we need to protect it. I love you guys so much. I'm Book of Catherine. Please donate below. I could really use the help. And for the rest of you guys, 
have a wonderful, fabulous time. And yeah, it's time to look for a replacement for Jim Jordan because I got to tell you, his district voted for Trump by 33%. 33%. And he sold them down the river and he knew it. And do you know why he did that? Because he lived in the ivory tower. He got too far away from them. He took them for granted because they were so easy to play. The press protected him. And that just can't fly anymore. I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you later. Freedom first. And clean the GOP with independence next. See you around the bend. Or sorry, independence running for GOP. No more incumbents. You know what I mean. Because this November, I think there's going to be a lot. I think you're going to have to do it again. I'll talk about that in another video.